What's up? Thank you guys for joining in today. I am BK back with another banger. Well, might not be a banger, but it's going to be a banging explanation. <laughs> nah, hope all is well with you guys. Back with another one. Today I'm coming at you with another video that I've done in the past, but I'm going to do it again for the people in the back, for the people on the sidelines, for the people who need a cotton swab to clean out their air a little bit. I just got a, a commenter who stated that they tried to use the MPC software as a plugin, but it only allows a single instance. One can play little games with MPC essentials on the side, but basically a pain. This should work. This should work, but Akai has dropped the ball on VST integration. Thanks for the video. Useful. So basically what they're saying is the integration with the MPC VST plugin, it doesn't integrate well with Studio One. It don't and it do is workarounds. And that's what I'm here to show you. Again, I've showed it in the past, but I'm gonna show it again. I told them that you, you only need an in, one instance of the MPC software. You can run multiple tracks. He answered back tracks in one instant. Yes, but how to map one MPC track on one Studio One track. So I'm gonna show how to do that right now. But before I do that, I wanna show you that I'm here at my home page. I created a playlist, Studio One and MPC Workflow. And anything that I do from here on out, I'm just gonna add it. That has anything to do with the MPC and Studio One, I'll just drop them directly in there so it'll be easier to find. Also, if you type in how to map MPC with Studio One, several videos show up and the video in particularly in particular how to set up studio one how to set set up mpc live 2.0 with studio one 4.0 i did this one year ago okay how to integrate mpc 2.0 with personas 3.5 i did that two years ago all right so i got videos on it but i'm gonna do this is this is gonna be the absolute last one all right so let's get on over into um studio one all right so we over in studio one i'm pretty sure you guys know how to drag and drop the the instruments drag and drop it in home you good he mentioned something about MPC Essentials. I don't even know why anyone use, it, use MPC Essentials. Please don't ask me about MPC Essentials because I don't use that at all. Why use MPC Essentials when you got MPC 2.0 software? I don't know. So we're in here. If you need to know how to set up your transport and all that, check the video on how to integrate MPC 2.0 software. I, I drop full details in that video. So I'm not going to go through that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create something real quick. So, so vibe with me while I create, then I'm going to show you how to map the tracks inside of studio one. All right, hold up. So I'm looking for a sample to use. All right, so I got this sample. This sample comes from Billy Blast, Ghetto Gospel, The Ghetto Gospel, Volume 8, Compositions. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slice him up real quick. All right, boom. So now I got that. So now I got the chops. Play it like that, or you could chop it up like. I mean, you could play it any way you're gonna play it. I'm just, I'm not really convinced on doing anything <laughs> the right way right now. I just want to get this point across on how to map your uh your NPC tracks inside of the Studio One tracks. All right, so once you got that, boom. Now you go back to main. Change this over. Change this out to, I don't know, say eight bars. Uh, make sure that this is not on. And I'm going to report this. completely botched that up because I was trying to be fly So now that I got the, the sample how I want it, I'm going to add some drums. And then we're going to move on to how you map into Studio One. you got your drums you got your sample you got whatever else is going on inside of the mpc 2.0 vst plugin once you have all of that together specifically with the drums this is the tedious thing because you have to go into pad mixer to make this work so this is pad mixer these are the pads, right? So you want to go inside of here. Each pad is going to the program. Each individual pad goes out to the program. The program, the program goes out to the main output. So this is output one and two. So the loop, the sample loop that I chopped and looped up, that's program one. This expansion kit, that's program two. 
they're both going out to outputs one and output two right which is the main out one and two of your mpc software however once you have everything organized and situated how you have it going how you you know you got your vibes you go in go into the pad mixer because you're going to have several drums going The drums are basically gone there's a little hint of the drums and that's because they're some some of them are going to a return send right some of them are going to the return send As you can see, the return send is there just a little bit. Sends one and two. If I go here and I mute the returns, now you hear no drums, right? But you still hear the sample. So what you want to do is you want to go down to your mix, press your mix in here in your instruments. If it's not there, you select instruments right there, select instruments, you scroll down to expand. Now I'm, I'm, I'm going to press play and then I'm going to tick off all the, the other channels, right? Yeah. Now that you have that, you have all your sounds. Remember this goes all the way up to 31 and for whatever reason, the numbers go by odd so channel one is output one and two inside of the mpc right Bangers. can i make this smaller so channels one and two becomes well output one and two inside of your mpc software becomes channel one on your mpc or the track one is is one and that's also one and two now output one and two is my sample See, when I press play, you don't see anything coming out of one and two inside of the MPC because I routed all the all the individual all the individual pads. Are routed the ones that I'm using. Right are routed to to its own output three and four five six seven eight 
I don't know why I skipped to 13, 14 and didn't go to 9 and 10. That's just me being stupid. But you'd go, oh, there go 9 and 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? So you go in, in that order. And if you want to see them, you go to your channel mixer and close returns. I'm going to close programs real quick. And right here, if you drag out the masters, you're then able to see all of the... Uh, inside of mapped out you have the channels open up inside of studio one how do i get them here inside of the event inside of the grid because i want to edit them i want to manipulate them all right so we're gonna do that also before i go there press play So you're basically able to solo and mute the channels right inside of Studio One's mixer, which is cool. Then you don't gotta, you don't have to go back and forth inside of your MPC, right? So now you have your channel set up. We know that this blue is the loop, right? So if you press record. Notice that nothing was recorded. So what you want to do is you add new track. You could go to file. You go to track. Okay. Start over. Slow down, son. You're killing them. Go to add new track, or you could just press T on your keyboard. You add new track. Audio. You can name it here loop you want it to go from your inputs you want it it's supposed to be your instruments right so instead of input left l plus r you go to instrument one output main because you don't have a bus set up yet so you leave that the way it is right so now Now you have it here. So if you press record, mute the MPC, bypass the MPC. So you see that the MPC is bypassed and this is being played directly into Studio One and you can see your wave is there. All right. So, well, unbypass the MP. I'm going to set up, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six tracks to set up so i'm gonna set that up real quick and then come back to you and show you something else Hold on. all right so i got the last i'm at the last one to, to set up 
you press T. This is hi hat tool. It's coming out of instrument output 11 on the MPC. Click OK and it creates a track over here. If you want to hide the outputs, you select from the last one to this one. I'm going to color them though, just so we know the difference. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit hide. So now they're hidden. You could collapse these, you could expand it. All right, so now your stuff looks normal. You press play. You're like, man, I don't see my levels moving. All right, hold up. You want to see the levels move? You hit the monitor on each one. I think I messed it up, right? I also don't want to see the NPC. I don't want to see this track. I'm going to get it and I'm going to hide that one as well. So now it's all, all wave. So now, simply, this thing's making me out to be alive. You want to make sure that the MPC is, does not have record enable on. Because if the actual instrument has record enable on, when you go to press record enable on the other the tracks that you want to record enable, it won't do that. And if you hide it, like I did, and you're ready to record enable, and you're like, it's not, it's making me look like I'm a liar. So make sure you turn off record enable on the actual instrument itself. Then you could go ahead and you hide it. And if you want to know how you get to there, you just press this button right here. Once you press that, you could hide your waves, you could hide your instruments, or you could come down here and just press what you don't want. All right, so now we got that. You're still not seeing it. You go ahead, you press record and they, if you just want to hear it or see it, you press the, the monitor button. But we want to record it, right? So you go ahead and you press record enable on each of the tracks. Press record enable on each of them. Now you could do this one of several ways. If you know your loop is tight and that's how you want it to loop, you could disable loop inside of your MPC. Software, uh, we're set up here. Um, I forgot though. So basically, you unhighlight that loop. I forgot how to do it inside of here. That's basically how you do it. You take off the loop. Go ahead, hit record enable. You want to hit punch in first, then hit record enable. And there you have it. Take off record enable on all of them. Go to the MPC, turn off the MPC, once 
once you have that, you know, you could get ahead and you could build, build from there. Now the steps, it's a little bit much. If you had, um, if you had your NPC plugged up and standalone to your interface, and you, you plug in your outs, your ins and your outs, then you could step past using the the plugin, the VST plugin, and you could just record directly into Studio One that way from your NPC standalone. So for the people in the front, for the people in the back, for the people in the nosebleeds, I hope you enjoyed this display on how to map your tracks in the visual from your NPC VST software or if you're in standalone, it's the same premise. Okay? It's the same premise if you're in standalone. Same thing. You map each track, each channel output, each pad, send them to their individual output, and then that becomes the channels on inside of Studio One. It's a little bit confusing. I'm gonna drop timestamps and try to clean it up a little bit, make it nice and presentable for you. I hope you enjoyed this. If you learned anything, if you appreciated the information, please run the thumbs up, thumb it up, share it along to your friend, your buddy, your producer pal, if they need that information, if they're using the NPC, so they too can know how to do it. Studio One 2020, y'all. Do remember that music is life. It is our DNA. Keep banging. Peace. Love. Light. Till next time. Peace. The, post it up in the comment section if you need any, you know, additional guidance. And I, you know, I try to see what I could do. All right. Love and light. Till next time. Peace.